All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com. As always, if you learn something, go ahead, hit that like button, leave a comment, and make sure you ring the bell so you get a notification when I drop a new video. And I just recently joined Instagram, so you can follow me on the gram at Anthony Smoke Data. In this video, I'll show you how I altered stored procedure code in SQL Server to allow for more flexible filtering using a dynamically constructed SQL statement. And we'll use my favorite process, the SP execute SQL command due to its security advantages. And so I'll say this is a continuation of this video. Pass parameters to SQL Server from Excel using stored procedures. In that video, I teach you an approach on how to use a parameterized query with a stored procedure call to retrieve that information from SQL Server and update uh, your Excel sheet. So we're picking up after that video. So go watch that video to understand how we get to this point, right? Uh, but first, in this video, I'm going to show you the functionality we implemented in the previous video. Then I'll show you the new functionality that we'll implement in Excel. And then finally, I'll show you how to modify the SQL code in our stored procedure to enable the new functionality. All right, does all that make sense? Let's get down to business. So on this Excel sheet, we're using the functionality that I taught you in the last video. So I've got information here for uh, New Jersey, shout out to Jersey, but let's say I wanna switch up, switch up my uh, report here to Georgia, and we know this works, so I'm gonna hit refresh. It's going to call, uh, it's gonna execute this stored procedure, Alt-2, sample order report Alt-2, that we have in SQL Server. It's gonna pass in Georgia, and our two dates, our begin date and our end date, to a stored procedure, it's gonna run, and it's gonna update, it's gonna give me Georgia. So we know that works. Now, let's say I remove the state. I'm just gonna change the date here. Gonna get rid of the state. Will this run? If I refresh this, again, there is a blank here for the state and it's gonna send two dates and I get nothing. So now, let's say I could put the state back. Let's go ahead and put Georgia back in here and I get rid of this end date. I'm only passing in one date, begin date. Let's see what happens. So you'll see here in the call, it passes in Georgia, it passes in the begin date, but then it passes in this weird uh, 12 a.m. value, and that's due to the uh, administrative settings uh, in Windows. Uh, for whatever reason, when there's a blank, it passes in kind of this as a substitute blank value, but if I run it, will I get anything back? It's thinking about it and I, I don't get anything back. And so likewise, if I were to take this, put it here and get rid of that. Now you'll notice I will get something back here, but not what I want. So I'm passing in Georgia. I'm passing in this uh, 12 a.m. and 1 to 2015. And so it's going to evaluate, oh, um, you know, greater than equal to 12 a.m., less than equal to 1 to 2015. So I will get something back, but it's not what I want. And if I remove everything here, if I get rid of Georgia and I get rid of the dates and I refresh, I get nothing. So this is not the functionality that I want. Let me show you the functionality that I do want in an updated version. Okay, so we're in a revised version of this Excel sheet. And you can see here, we've got California, we're going back to Cali. Uh, leave in the comments if you know who makes the song Going Back to Cali. I will take either the 80s version or the 90s version. Big shout out to you if you know who uh, makes Going Back to Cali. But anyway, uh, I wanna show you this functionality. We know this works when I have all of these populated, but let's go ahead and get rid of everything. So when I put nothing in here, what will happen? Will I get anything in this updated version? It's thinking about it, and you'll see if I scroll down here, I get all states, all dates. So I'm basically getting everything. I won't scroll all the way down, but I'm getting everything out of the uh, out of the database or the query that I set up at least because there's no filters. So that's the functionality that I want. 
if I do select California and refresh the report, you'll see uh, it's sitting California and then those two kind of uh, midnight uh, values here, but it's going to handle that. It's only going to give me California, but I get all dates, California for all dates, right? So if I do, um, well, let's leave California in there. If I control Z back out of that, if I do California and I only want to see, uh, let's pick uh, 1 1 2015. Is there an order for 1 1 2015 on California? See, it's smart enough to say, oh, you just want 1 1 2015 uh, for California. And trust me, it works the same way uh, on the end date. But what if I uh, delete the state and I say 1 1 uh, 2015 to uh, 115, 2015, it should give me, you'll see it passes in those, uh, two dates, no state. It should give me every state, right? I see Alabama and, uh, between order dates between those two, uh, dates that I have given it, but I should see every state here. I'm going a little too quick, but you'll see, uh, this is essentially every state. So this is the revised functionality. This is going to be uh, a little better for, uh, for you to use to query that database. Um, and in order to do this, we got to have SQL code that's smart enough to handle those weird noon, I'm sorry, midnight values that Excel passes to SQL Server. So I'm going to show you the SQL that I use in the stored procedure to enable this functionality next. Okay, so I am in SQL Server. See, I'm using SQL Server Express here. And this is my stored procedure that's going to tackle those values essentially that come over from Excel, from those Excel cells. So I'm creating a procedure, SP sample order report alt three, and I'm declaring three variables, order state, order start date, order end date. And I'm declaring this SQL string that's going to uh, hold that dynamically built uh, SQL string that we're going to build later down in the code. And so I want to handle blank values from Excel. So when the order state comes in as the um, you know blank value here, I'm setting it to null. When the order start date comes in as uh, midnight, <laughs> 12 a.m., I'm setting it to null. When the order end date comes at midnight, I'm setting it to null uh, as well. And so again, these values are going to, could be different based upon your specific um, machine. So change these accordingly. Um, when I don't put anything for the start or end date in Excel, as you saw, it passes these, uh, these values in and I just wanna set them to null. And so now we move on here where I'm setting up the base uh, SQL string here. And so I'm using um, this SQL string text because it enables flexibility on dynamically building out the where clause for filtering. And I have to use Unicode, which is indicated by this in here in the front, uh, if I want to eventually use the SP execute SQL command. And so as I always say, you substantially reduce the risk of preventing a SQL injection attack by differentiating the parameters from the SQL string. So even if SQL is not your forte, this should be easy to understand. Your homework assignment is to Google the benefits of SP execute SQL versus the execute command and then act on that information. Just know that in order to use SP execute SQL, I have to um, uh, declare a string and this is my base uh, SQL. Your base X SQL will be, uh, will be different here on what you join together. And so you'll notice this where one equal one. And so when adding in conditions to a query that already has uh, one equal one, where one equal one, all conditions afterwards, right, can begin with the and statement, right? If there are no subsequent where clauses added to the SQL statement, then the query isn't filtered at all. Because one equal one is always true, you return all records. So even if I don't have anything um, to pass into this uh, stored procedure, I could just end with where one equal one and I'll get all records. So that's why I have that here. And it allows subsequent statements to begin with and. It's just a convention that you'll see in SQL uh, code. So um, 
let's take a look and see what's happening here uh, with the, uh, the case statements here. Um, you'll see this first case statement is looking at when the order state is null. So when I don't pass in a value or again, coming from Excel, the value will be the empty string. I set it to null. But regardless, inside the stored procedure, when it's null, I say, you know, just make the state province equal to state province. And basically that is going to return all states. Uh, it's, it's the same as saying one equal one. The state will always equal itself. So it's a way of getting every state. Otherwise, if there is a state provided, then just make the state province equal to the parameter. So that's what the case statement is doing there. Then it goes and evaluates the next case statement, right? This is what uh, will occur when I have both an order start date and an order end date. This is the standard functionality where the order date key has to be greater than the uh, order start date and the order date key has to be less than or equal to order end date, basically in between when I supply both values. When uh, the order start date is supplied or is not null and the order end date is null, meaning I only have an order start date, then just make the order date key equal to the order start date. Otherwise do nothing. If I have the order end date, and I don't have an order start date, it's the opposite. Then the order date key is equal to the order end date. Otherwise do nothing. And then uh, I will always want to add an order by. I just want to order by the state and the date, this order date key. And then I don't have to print the SQL string. That's more for um, debugging purposes. And then I use my favorite, my SP execute SQL. I pass and give it the SQL string. Then you have to define the parameters that you're going to give to SP execute SQL. And then you give it the actual values uh, that have been defined here uh, in this stored procedure. So this is the setup, essentially. Um, this is the code that will provide different outcomes based upon which Excel cells you populate. It's more flexible than the stored procedure that I showed you uh, in the first uh, video. This is merely a framework to show you how, you how you can use the case statement to add additional conditional statements to your where clause. Now I'm sure some hardcore stack overflow nerds, and I say that with you know the utmost respect, can, can certainly nitpick a few things here, but this is a learning framework, right? Use the case statement if you need to build on to your, your main statement where you're trying to build out that SQL string. So um, in any event, this is Anthony Smoke, I have shown you how to uh, basically set up your Excel sheet so it can handle uh, not having a value, or if you have dates, it can handle not having uh, th those date values, or it'll handle just having one date value or no date value. So anyway, a lot more flexibility in this setup than in the last uh, video that I showed you. So this has been Anthony Smoke. Hope you learned something as always. Get out there, do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.